Well, it turns out that woke SJW Disney actually lost $50 billion from trying to start a pro-homosexuality war with the state of Florida over a bill that was simply about protecting parental rights and protecting children from sexualization. You see, sexualization of any uh, sexual orientation, regardless if it's heterosexual or homosexual, ought not be taught to uh, kids who are eight years old or under eight. And even, like, you know, uh, kids are like fifth, sixth grade is kind of pushing it. I'd argue that because I was taught it when I was 11. Well, it was forced, it was forced upon me when I was 11. And even the kind of stuff I was shown was pretty bad. And I was, that was over a decade ago. It's gotten a whole lot worse and more pornographic since then. I'd argue that it shouldn't really kind of be start, you know, it shouldn't start to be taught until at least I'd say around like maybe seventh, eighth grade, eighth grade at best. And even that's kind of pushing it in my opinion. But you know, they started a war with Florida over a bill that not only had nothing to do with them, but was actually pro-family, which you would have thought Disney would support something that's pro-family, but it turns out they're actually supporting the side of the uh, the Predators. And they've lost a lot of money from doing that. This is on the uh, Washington Examiner. It says, Disney has lost $50 billion in value since war with Florida began. Disney's stock has lost nearly 50 billion in revenue since the start of March, this is back in 2022, when it took a political gamble to oppose Florida's controversial new education law. Disney's, yeah, it's only controversial to those who want to groom kids. Uh, Disney's stock was down by more than 2% on Friday and was uh, down by more than 8.5% in the past few days as Florida lawmakers worked to punish the company for wading in into state politics. The stock's market cap has declined by about 46.6 billion since March, uh, just from March 1st, just one day before the company. Uh, came out against the legislation. See, the bill had nothing to do with them whatsoever. But you see, apparently we live in a world where employees tell the boss what to do. Employees t apparently now tell the CEO what to do. So he came out against the bill, pressured by his employees. Like, again, I've said this before, I don't recall when, when I used to work in retail, uh, I don't recall when employees tell the CEO what to do. But apparently that's the new world we live in. It says in the article, the public row uh, between pub Republican lawmakers and Disney has been at the front and center of the battle over the parental rights and education bill. Uh, I would say incorrectly branded, they don't say gay bill by opponents. Initially, Disney did not take it, basically they did the right thing initially, which is not taking any side, being neutral. Uh, basically all about a bill that would, that would ban classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity though, uh, through the third grade. But under pressure from investors and employees, the company came out against the uh, bill, or sorry, came out in full throttle opposition against the bill. Disney CEO Bob Chapek said his company would end political donations to the Sunshine State. Again, I don't recall when employees tell the CEO what to do. It's kind of weird how that works because, you know, he's the one, if you're an employee, he's the one giving you the paycheck. You know, you just do the work. I mean, again, I used to work in retail, and I, I don't recall when it would go by well if you try to tell the boss what to do. <laughs> Bunch of garbage. It says in the article, now Republican lawmakers are exacting their revenge. Again, this was back in 2020, 2022, when the whole thing, you know, played out. This week, 20, uh, 23, 6, 23 to 16 vote uh, in the Gottlieb Senate uh, passed legislation to dismantle the Reedy Creek Improvement District, which allows Disney to oversee its own zoning, infrastructure, laws, policy, policing, and policing an area around the park. The state house also voted to uh, do so by a 70 to 38 vote. The legislation dissolved special district. The special districts created before the 1968 Reedy Creek was established in 1967. The uh, final, there's a financial professor at the Florida Gulf Coast University pointed out that there isn't a precedent for Florida undergoing such a large, uh, undoing a large, still large special district like Reedy Creek, and that the change introduces major business uncertainty. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' office contends that the Reedy Creek district allows Disney unfair business advantages. Yeah, they get, they get some kind of uh, tax benefit or whatever else too, but, um, you know, again, you shouldn't come out, you should just stay neutral. You know, if you're an enter entertainment company, you're politically neutral. You know, don't, see, if you're a CEO, you're, you're not at the mercy of your employees. You're the one giving them the paycheck. You know, we don't live in a world where employees tell the boss what to do. You know, it's it just it's a bunch of it's a bunch of insanity. Special districts could, uh, says in the article, special districts could come in some, or sorry, could in some instances show favoritism. The office told the Washington Examiner in a statement this week. So should a corporation be serving as a regulator and a business at the same time? Should a corporation get to avoid standard environmental permitting processes? Should a corporation engage in eminent domain? Other businesses don't get these privileges. Smith told the Washington Examiner that the move by Republicans could have unintended consequences for taxpayers and a chilling effect on business investment in the, shun, in the Sunshine State. Reedy Creek reportedly uh, has bond liabilities between $1 billion and $1.7 Should it be dissolved, those liabilities could likely be transferred to the nearby counties 
you know, they, they gave all these other stuff, you know. Uh, the uh, debut, uh, let's see, the debt service alone for Reedy Creek is over a billion dollars, Democratic, you know, they're basically trying to, like, do this pro-Disney defense. And, and there are some arguments that could be made, you know, from a business perspective, but in the end, it, you know, just stay politically neutral. None of this would have happened. Don't let, see, the CEO doesn't let the employees tell him what to do. Reedy Creek self-governing services are initially, uh, essentially paid for by Disney's taxing itself, with the district collecting an estimated $105 million annually. annually. Should Reedy Creek be taken over by neighboring uh, counties that would likely end up having to, to make up for loss of revenues needed to fund local services in the special district? To me, the big issue here is that nobody knows what the repercussions are financially. Nothing noting that taxpayers could end up footing the bill. Yeah, that is true. A lot of the policies that are passed, you know, if you're a taxpayer, it should pay, you should, you know, so there is some precedent to from, from like a financial perspective against this whole thing. So I, I will give it that. Republican sponsors of legislation have acknowledged that the big questions remain about the legal and financial effort, effects of the legislation, but have argued that the logistics can be worked out over the coming months. Uh, Smith said he doesn't think the decision by Republicans to target Disney sets a good tone for the state, which has touted its business-friendly friendly bona fides. Smith said that while he doesn't think that it's good policy for companies to wade in the hot-button issues and political issues like Disney did, the move the state legislator could spook businesses and investments in the state. You know, but again, it's like just stay politically neutral. And like none of this would have happened if they just were staying politically neutral. That's the thing too, is that entertainment companies. I mean, believe it or not, I think entertainment companies should just you know stick to entertainment and not try to wade in on issues that have nothing to do with them. And it's kind of weird that a supposedly a family-friendly company is coming out against a pro-family bill that gives parental rights that stops predators from sexualizing young kids. Kind of weird how that works. I mean, Walt Disney, whatever you think of him, he would not have. You know, he definitely would not have approved of this move by Disney to come out against such a pro-family bill. But, you know, he's dead now. So, of course, that's, you know, he's probably turning in his grave. At that. He's, at, like some people said, he's turning in his grave. I happen to believe probably is, you know. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, entertainment and politics, there should be, a, just like others, there should be a separation of church and state, which I support. There should also be a separation of entertainment and politics. Plain and simple. People go to Disney World to escape the insanity of American politics. So when woke SJW Disney employees bring all that insanity in, well, you're going to have problems. Financial problems. Big financial problems, like we're seeing right now. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.